WCBI Sports Egg Bowl Special 2019 is brought to you by Cannon Motors of Mississippi in Starkville, Midway Marine, Stones Jewelry, Tommy Morgan Incorporated Realtors, OCH Regional Medical Center, George Sherman Clothiers, Bank First, a better way to bank, Bill Cunningham, Attorney at Law, and Visit Columbus, the city that has it all. Welcome to our 2019 Egg Bowl Special. I'm Courtney Robb. Since 1901, Mississippi State and Ole Miss have battled it out on the gridiron, all in hopes of either keeping or taking home the much-desired golden egg. Since 2015, the Golden Egg Trophy has been shuffled between Oxford and Starkville, each team victorious playing on their rivals' home field. This season, the Bulldogs will look to break the cycle and keep the hardware in Starkville for two consecutive years. Mississippi State head coach Joe Moorhead saying, like always, the Egg Bowl game should be an emotional one. I don't know that you're going to be able to completely quell some of the, the fire and the emotion that go into a rivalry game or else it's not a rivalry, you know what I mean? So, but, you know, like I said a little bit earlier, we, we want our play in this game and for all Egg Bowl games to be known for our competitiveness and execution, you know, between the whistles, not, not any nonsense before the game, not any, you know, post-snap chicanery and certainly nothing that happens, you know, after the game. Our coaches have been telling us like a championship game. You know, they don't have nothing to lose, you know. We have something to lose, so, you know, we're going to take it seriously, try to get both eligible, go out, perform, do our best and have fun. And just the main thing is keep the egg bowl where it's supposed to be. You know, it's a big game, so, you know, veteran guys have played in this game, know how big it is, know how big, you know, a big play can change the, you know, change the momentum and just swing things around. You can't really prepare. I mean, intensity already there. It's a big rivalry. Everybody know what kind of rivalry this is. So if you don't have the intensity for this game, it's not the game for you. The Egg Bowl rivalry is tradition for homegrown Mississippians, yes, of course. For the born and raised players and Ole Miss head coach Matt Luke. Born as a rebel, Luke earned two Egg Bowl victories as a player and also has one win as the interim head coach from back in 2017. While the pageantry can be easy to get caught up in, Luke's saying it all boils down to business as usual. It is a very uh, emotional and passionate game, and, and it should be, as all rivalry games should be, with two passionate fan bases. And it's a, you know, it's a great college football game, but at the end of the day, you still got to go out there and play football. I mean, nothing that happens, you know, you, I mean, you got to go play football between the whistles and take care of your business and go play really, really hard. Uh, all the other stuff is not going to have a, not going to affect the outcome of the game. Sitting there, and he's like, guys, I just want you to realize how big of a game this is. You know, growing up, he said. Uh, this is always the game that determined if I had a good or bad year growing up. And, and now, especially as the head coach of the University of Mississippi, it really determines whether he has a good or bad year. And so um, we, want, we want it for him. You know, selfishly we want it for us too because everybody wants to win this game. We want to win it bad, but we definitely want it for Coach Luke. And I've grown up a Rebel fan my whole life. You know, I've been cheering for Ole Miss forever. You know, my room's decorated in Ole Miss decor. House is, you know, Egg Bowl is uh, definitely a big deal in our household. Make sure you keep tuning in because we have plenty more when we come back after the break. Welcome back to our 2019 Egg Bowl special. Courtney Robin joining me is the commercial dispatch reporter for Mississippi State, Ben Portnoy, who's been covering Mississippi State for the past season. Ben, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Courtney. Excited to be here. Happy we could have you. Yeah. So your first year actually covering State for the Sea Dispatch First year, first impressions of this Mississippi State team, especially first impressions of the Egg Bowl as a whole. Yeah, it's definitely been fun. Uh, it, it's a unique team. There's been gotten a lot, a little bit of everything, definitely. Um, you know, whether it be you know big wins, big losses, some coaching rumors here and there. It's been kind of a wild season, up and down, and you get a lot of that when you're four and six and five and six. Um, so it, it's been a wild season, kind of a whirlwind, but I think that when you look at the Egg Bowl, it's a rivalry that really sticks out nationally, not just in Mississippi. It's one that uh, people care about, not only here, but around the country. And I, and I think, you know, I've gotten a new appreciation for it being here full time now. You mentioned the ups and downs and kind of the underwhelming season that Mississippi State has had. Obviously, suspensions as well as injuries have played a huge role in that. How much do you think those suspensions and injuries have 
played that role in Mississippi State season. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that people don't necessarily take into account is that how much, not necessarily on the surface, I mean, you have about three starters, give or take, that have missed time extensively for suspensions. But where it really manifests itself is down that depth chart. You lose some of that depth. You have you know, freshmen who maybe would be redshirting, playing on special teams and things like that, when you wouldn't necessarily have to have that um, should all those 10 players be eligible. And because of that, Mississippi State struggled. I mean, you look at the defense, especially on the front interior. Lee Autry hasn't played. That's really hurt this rush defense. Marcus Murphy not being able to play at safety. Uh, and with him being in and out of the lineup, and now with <laughs> Murray Smitherman out for the season, uh, it, it complicates that safety situation. So I, I think almost more than anything, it's beyond just that, you know, j j beyond just the surface level things and losing some starters. It, it, it really hurts them down the, down the roster and in that depth. That depth. The good news for Mississippi State is quarterback Tommy Stevens is expected to be 100% for that game, as well as all of those players that have not been playing due to suspensions should also be active. Do you think with Tommy Stevens back playing that starting position and with all the other players back from suspensions that that state team is dynamic enough to be Ole Miss right now? Yeah, I mean, I think the thing for me is that say what you will about Tommy Stevens, and I know he's been in and out of the lineup, didn't got pulled in that Tennessee game. Part of that was to injury. Part of that was because he wasn't playing well. But I, I think what you see with Tommy Stevens is that he is a really capable quarterback. I know it's been in spurts, and I know that you know one number that sticks out is that Mississippi State hasn't thrown for over 250 yards in a game this year. Um, now, granted, Joe Moorhead has been on record multiple times this season saying things start with the ground game for them. But when you have a team that can't force the ball down the field the way you need to, and that in that vertical passing game. Uh, you're not going to be able to keep the defense honest. Teams can stack the box against you and sort of keep Colin Hill in check, at least to some degree. And with Tommy Stevens, he gives you a lot more of that downhill passing game, downfield passing game, rather. And I, I think that if you look at the numbers, Garrett Schrader's completion percentage is hover, has hovered right around 60% or below. And he hasn't really been all that effective in the passing game. He's a great runner, don't get me wrong, but I, I think Tommy Stevens gives you a little bit more of that passing game. It sort of makes you keep guessing a little bit more with what Mississippi State's going to bring out on offense. You also mentioned earlier Mississippi State's rush defense and kind of the ebbs and flows they've faced throughout the season. Going up against quarterback John Rice Plumley for Ole Miss, who's been having a fantastic season, how do you think State matches up with John Rice Plumley if he starts. Well, and that's the thing is that when you look at this on paper, this is a terrible matchup for the Mississippi State defense. Mississippi State's defense comes in ranked 12th in the SEC uh, in rushing. The only teams behind them are Vanderbilt and Arkansas, and I don't think Mississippi State fans exactly want to hear their names in that category of teams right now, at least of late. Um, and because of that, you see that you know this is a game where John Rice Plumley could very well run for 200 yards. I mean, I'm not going to put that in writing necessarily, but I think that this is a game that really matches up poorly. It's something that. Mississippi State struggled with all year. Uh, teams have been able to run the ball against them. The secondary is more experienced. You do have guys like Cam Danzler, Martin Emerson, Jerry and Jones as freshmen have played really good, really big snaps for this team, um, despite being young. But I think have shown some stuff. But um, what Mississippi State has in the pass game, they have not been able to contain in the run game. And I think that when you look at this on paper, the way that Ole Miss runs, which mind you is the number one rushing S offense in the SEC right now. It's just a really, really bad matchup when you look at just numbers-wise uh, for Mississippi State. And the Egg Bowl often comes down to which one of these teams has the most to lose. So that being said, MSU facing a lot of criticism with their underwhelming season. Ole Miss finally bowl eligible for the first time in a few years. Which one of these teams do you think has the most to lose? And also, who do you got for who's going to take home the Golden Egg this year? I'm going to go ahead and say I think that Mississippi State wins simply because I think that on paper I think they're the more talented team. They do play infinite, they have played infinitely better at home this year. But even that said, I, I think that it's going to be an interesting game. I think you know Mississippi State's trying to you know get bowl eligible and keep that bowl streak alive. Uh, Ole Miss at five and seven probably gets into a bowl game based on APR scores. They're sitting in that realm, but. If you're Mississippi State, I think you have more to lose. This is a season that you come into it and probably expecting seven, eight wins. And if you don't do that, you know, people are going to start calling, uh, calling for changes. And I think that for Mississippi State, you have to, uh, you, this is a game you have to win if you're Joe Moorhead. I absolutely agree with you, but we'll have to wait to see which one of these teams will take home the golden egg this year. That's it for now. We'll have more for you when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Egg Bowl special uh, preview show. Chris Bolton, I'm joined with Nick Suss for the Clarion Ledger. 
He's the old Miss beat writer. Appreciate you joining us. I'm happy to do it, y'all. What's up? All right. So, of course, um, got the egg bowl coming up. Just uh, tell me, you know, what you writing for Ole Miss and everything, writing about Ole Miss. Just um, what's your mindset? You know, how how do you feel uh, being um, indoctrinated into this rivalry last year? What's your thoughts about it coming into the game this year? Yeah, I mean, I've been around a lot of pretty famous rivalries in college football and other sports. I've covered Yankees Red Sox games before. I mean, there's nothing quite like this rivalry just because of how close everything is, just mm -hmm. how proximal and everybody has a side and it's the only thing that matters. Right. right like right. there are some other areas like I covered Georgia, Georgia Tech and Georgia, Florida in the past. Mm -hmm. Those are games where, well, if Georgia beats Florida but loses to Tech or loses to Auburn, you can split it. This is the only rivalry game this, that matters. This is what matters. Yes. And, and and that's what makes this such an interesting rivalry <laughs> is that everything comes down to this one. And there was this quote from John Rice Plumley on Monday mm -hmm. where he said Matt Luke told him, Hey, when I was growing up, whether Ole Miss or Mississippi State won determined if I had a good or bad year. Is that not, serious? Not day, not week, <laughs> not even month. Whole year the rest depended of the year. on the Egg Bowl. And, exactly. And that's just crazy. Yes, it's, it's a big time rivalry. You don't, you really don't understand it until you live it, until you're in it. Yeah. But um, just going into the matchup, you know, what do you feel like Ole Miss has to do to you know come away with the victory? I think it comes down to whichever team stops the run better, because both of these teams are going to establish the run. They're both going to try and pound the run, whether it's State with Kylan Hill and their quarterbacks, or mm -hmm. Ole Miss with John Rice Plumley and their running backs. There's going to be a lot of rushing. It's going to come down to which team stops it. Exactly. Ole Miss's run attack is based purely on big plays. They yes. lead the country in 30-yard runs. They lead the country in, you know, big play percentage, or they're up near the top with mm -hmm. it. Mississippi State is more of a plotting rushing attack. They right, like to sustain right. drives. Mm -hmm. Whichever team can take away what the other offense's strength is is going to be in the driver's seat. Definitely. And probably the difference is through SEC games only this year, Ole Miss is fifth in the SEC in rushing defense. Mm -hmm. Mississippi State is 12th in the SEC in rushing defense. That's one of the few discernible differences right, between the two right. teams. But as anyone can know, that doesn't necessarily matter on exactly. Thursday. It also be interesting, interesting to see who can get the the big time plays in the passing game. Yeah, you know, both teams, uh, you know, with State having Stevens and uh, Ole Miss having Plumlee, um, they've been struggling a little bit with the passing game. But if they could get things going in that on on that side of the ball. They'll be good to go. Yeah, there's a there's a triple question mark for both teams, whether should you blame the quarterback, the play calling, or the receivers. And for me, I look at both of these teams and I just ask, who's going to catch the ball? Because mm -hmm. these are the two worst secondaries in the SEC. But these are also two teams that only have two combined receivers in the top 30 in the SEC in right. receiving yards. Right. So... I expect there to be big plays, and you're mm -hmm. right that making big plays in the passing game might be a difference, but the question is, who's going to do it? Because yeah. Elijah Moore's catching a ton of balls for Ole Miss, but they're eight-yard out routes exactly. every time. And Mississippi State, on the other hand, how many dropped passes did they have against Abilene several. Christian? Yeah, several. It's, so. Who's going to catch the ball? And maybe that, the that's my is, question. Maybe it'll be Elijah Moore catching one of those eight-yard passes, but turning into a 30, 40-yard run, because he's great you know yeah. what I'm saying, with running the ball after uh, making the catch. Oh, and that's totally true, and I... I understand that the running backs are also going to factor into the passing game as mm -hmm. well. Ole Miss loves to use Jerry Ely in the passing game. I'm sure Mississippi State is going to incorporate whether it's Gibson or Hill or somebody into the passing game because that might end up being the difference. And also just going to this matchup, this big time game for both coaches. You know, you, you, you don't want to go into the offseason losing the Egg Bowl. So we'll, I'm pretty sure both coaches, you know, they, they really need this win. Yeah, I can't speak too much about Joe Moorhead and Mississippi State since I'm often here in Oxford, but I know for Matt Luke and, and this entire coaching staff, Rich Rodriguez, Mike McIntyre, mm -hmm. the difference between a four-win season and a five-win season is pretty huge because there were a ton of excuses for this Ole Miss team coming in. They were thin, didn't have much of a senior class. You lose A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf right, and Jordan right. Tamu and Dawson Knox and your entire offense. There are excuses. Mm -hmm. But you lose those excuses when you lose by one possession against Memphis and Cal and Auburn right Cal. and Texas A&M. Yeah. When you have four one-possession losses against teams that theoretically you should have beaten or you could have beaten, you lose your excuses. Exactly. So, so Ole Miss, it's going to be important to if this game is close, you got to finish it out. Definitely, definitely. So, um, do you who you feel like is probably going to win the matchup? If you had to give uh, 
you know, just maybe a possible verdict. Who do you feel like is going to get the win? Well, I'll just tell you what. There's a reason that Vegas has this as a one-point game, and they haven't decided which team is one up. Uh, Mississippi State opened as the favorite. Ole Miss becomes the favorite. Mississippi State. It's a, it's a seesaw of a game. This is a pick 'em. I think in this rivalry, more often than not, the better team wins. That whole bit about everything being even. I'm not sure about that. I'm also not sure about this home field advantage when the road team has won four the years in a row. Yeah, exactly. uh, that said, I'm not going to pick a winner because I don't do that, and I'm smart <laughs> enough to know that this is on camera and recorded <laughs> and will be preserved for all time. But I will say I do expect it to be a one-possession game. Gotcha. I'm not picking a blowout go like down last to the wire. year. I don't know about that, but I do okay. know it's going to be close. All right, I got you, I got you. If you could maybe give... We'll give a couple of X factors yeah, for, for both sure. teams. Who you feel like will be the X factor for Ole Miss? Because we all expect, you know, John Rice Plumley to be to, to get his pretty much. Yeah. Is it? Will it be somebody else? Maybe a Jerion Ely or Elijah Moore, or somebody else that we should look at as the X factor for Ole Miss? I think I'm actually going to pick defensive guys. I'm okay. going to pick Lakia Henry and Jaquez Jones in the middle Second. because mm-hmm. those two linebackers are going to need to stuff the run. And for Mississippi State. It comes down to their linebackers. They have perhaps the biggest linebacking mm-hmm. room in yeah, the Errol SEC Thompson. just on pure size, Errol right. Thompson in the middle being one of them. Those guys are going to have so much responsibility dealing with Ole Miss's speed to the outside. You're John Rice Plumley, Jerry on Ely, Scotty right. Phillips getting mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Whereas Ole Miss's linebackers, who might not be as big, are going to have to stuff the middle where Mississippi State tends to run a little more power. Exactly. All right. Sounds good. We appreciate you joining us, Nick. We'll have more coming up after the break. Welcome back to our 2019 Egg Bowl special. I'm assuming that all of you are sitting down with your families because it's the Egg Bowl and it's Thanksgiving. So I'm sitting here (laughs) with my family, my wonderful sports family. You know who it is. Chris Bolton, Tom Ebel. In case you forgot, I'm Courtney Robb. And we're here (laughs) to discuss who do we think is actually going to be either keeping or taking home the golden egg this year. We all have... Some pretty good opinions, I think. I'm going to start us off on this one. Um, My pick for the 2019 Egg Bowl is Ole Miss. I think that Ole Miss this season has statistics on their side right now. Okay. We look at Mississippi State. They've got the 73rd rushing defense in the nation right now. Not what we saw from Mississippi State in the past. Going up against... An Ole Miss team that is leading the SEC in rushing right now does not bold, bode well for the Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. John Rice Prumley, the true freshman quarterback, 989 rushing yards this season, 11 touchdowns. I expect this game to be no different for JRP. Expect him to run all over the Bulldogs, I think, in Starkville. And also Ole Miss doing a fantastic job, although they haven't pulled out the wins at the end of the game and every road game they've had this season, they've played much better with difficult teams like LSU and Alabama uh, than Starkville has played with all season. So I'm rolling with the Rebels. Okay. So you're going with the trend that the road team will now win five straight. That would tie the longest streak in the series. I'm going with the home team. I'm going with Mississippi State. And really it's because of the 73rd rushing defense. A lot of that is a lot due to the suspensions, and now it's you have nothing else. This is it. If you don't win this game, you go home. And so all the guys who are suspended, they're going to be back for this one. You know, so State's going to have Marcus Murphy, Willie Gay, Lee Autry. Those are big boosts to a defense that sorely needed them all year long. Uh, for Mississippi State, I think a lot is going to come down to Kylan. He's had success in this rivalry before. I think it, i got to go with the home team. There's got to be an end to the streak. <laughs> You know, everyone goes home team over road team. I got to go with the home. Mississippi State's currently favored right now. I'm going with the Bulldogs. All right. Well, I'm going to go with the home team as well. No, I'm going to go Mississippi Courtney State. Courtney, you're on the island. I was going to say, Chris is the last one to make a decision here. So, but I like your JRP, uh, you know, reference, you know, former Old Grove alum. Shout out to JRP. Ooh. But um, I'm going to go ahead and go Mississippi State. They have a, uh, I feel like, you know, Ole Miss, they've had a bunch of close games this season. I feel like this is going to be another close game. And if the trend continues for Ole Miss, they just haven't been able to pull off the victory. So I think Mississippi State, they're going to take care of home field advantage and keep that Egg Bowl trophy in Starfield. Well, both of you have fantastic opinions. We'll see if they're right or <laughs> my prediction is correct. We'll put a wrap a bow on it when we come back after the break. Stay with us.
Make sure you follow our continuous coverage of the 2019 Egg Bowl. And from all of us, happy Thanksgiving. WCBI Sports Egg Bowl Special 2019 is brought to you by Cannon Motors of Mississippi in Starkville, Midway Marine, Stones Jewelry, Tommy Morgan Incorporated Realtors, OCH Regional Medical Center, George Sherman Clothiers, Bank First, A Better Way to Bank, Bill Cunningham, Attorney at Law, and Visit Columbus, the city that has it all.